Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. I'm a second generation builder and this channel is devoted to all things design and construction. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about why we'll be installing a Flow by Moen Smart Water Shutoff. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to start by telling you a story. About 20 years ago, we had a house that was for sale. It had two levels and a daylight basement underneath it. Those two upper levels were fully furnished. Well, we were on vacation. Partway into the vacation, my dad got a phone call. On the uppermost part of the house, a toilet fitting gave way. It failed. It was a defect in the material. That water flooded from the upper part of the house all the way through the basement. It was a new construction home for sale. No one had ever lived there, and it had to be gutted and repaired. It came to somewhere around $120,000 in damages. Now think about that. That's money from about 20 years ago. Imagine that adjusted for inflation. So that lesson has always stuck with me, that water damage during construction can be a massive problem. Now think for just a minute about what's going into this kitchen and where the failures could end up coming from. We're going to have true three-quarter inch hardwood floors put down. So it's not going to be tile, it's not going to be a laminate, and it's not an engineered product. Wood is more susceptible to changes in moisture content. We know that just in general, but if you get a lot of liquid water on that floor, you can have a massive failure. So in this kitchen, right here is where the kitchen sink is. Think of all of the moving parts in that kitchen sink that could fail. We've got the dishwasher. We'll end up having that installed before we get our final inspection done. Something there could give way. Over in the refrigerator area, commonly called an ice box there, even though we don't actually use ice boxes anymore, we had a house one time that had a failure there. There had been an incidental leak. It actually had homeowners living there, and it ended up just destroying the wood floor in that area, and we had to repair it. So given the lessons that I've learned through a couple of different failures over the years, I know that products that we put in our house can fail. And that's why we're going to put in the smart water shutoff. Okay, I'm not a plumber, I don't pretend to be a plumber, but I know enough about the industry to be conversant with talking to a plumber. This will get installed by a licensed plumber. But this is it. This is the whole house water shut off. Uh, I'll just show you the different pieces that come with it. This is pretty uh, sturdy material, I'll, I'll tell you, just take my word for it. This guy ends up getting plugged into a power supply. I'll show you that later on in this episode. Obviously, this hasn't been installed yet, so I'm going to be recording this throughout the process so that uh, you get to see not only it before it's installed, but also after it's installed. But this just goes into a regular receptacle, and then the power supply, uh, let's see here, it just plugs in right on the back. What came with it was a couple of different handouts, but this is the one I especially want to talk about. It's for use on a new construction job site. You see, in the past, this is not a new device, but it was typically for a homeowner. But what you needed was Wi-Fi to operate it. Well, now, as long as you have power going to this device and you have a pressurized water line, this can be set up so that if there is an unusual quantity of water that, is, that draws through as this senses it, it'll turn off the water to the house. That's huge. Just on a recent house, uh, the plumber forgot to crimp one of the fittings on PEX, and we had a water leak. Thankfully, it wasn't the end of the world, but really that was just because the plumber was on site. The plumber was there, I got a phone call, I had to try to walk him through where the whole house shutoff valve was, have him turn it off. It was a fiasco, but like I say, it could have been way worse. Well, instead of turning off the house water, 
every time somebody leaves, every time somebody comes on the job site, I can have this installed. And then when the finishes go in, I can sleep soundly at night. So that's why I'm doing this. What will it end up costing? I don't know at the end of the day. Um, this was sent to me by Moan, so thank you very much for that. But I'm probably going to put this standard on all of our houses. And in the final video, in this video, in the final clip, I should say, I'll explain why. I'll use some mathematics to show why me, as a high-performance spec builder, is strongly thinking about putting this in every one of our houses. Well, we're just about complete with construction, and as you can see, we have the flow installed. We'll go ahead and walk through some of the different features, uh, the different sensitivity settings, and how we set up our piping. Let's go ahead and begin there with where the water supply comes into the house and what these valves are doing. Starting from the concrete wall, you can see where the plumbing supply comes in. And then as we come around, you notice that there's a series of valves. I'll go ahead and step into the next image and walk you through what each one of those valves does. If we think about how the water is able to flow, first think about it as if there were no valves installed. So if there was not this valve, this valve, this, this, or the one over here, this whole system could be charged with water and water could flow through it. But with each valve, every time you turn it off, you're forcing the water to go a different direction. So right now this water valve is off, so instead of the water being able to flow this way and this way, it stopped here, forcing it to go this way. If we shut off this valve and open this one, we could now force the water to go this way, could turn this off, and now let's just say that there was ever kind of a a power outage or something like that, and maybe the homeowner didn't want to keep using this flow valve for a temporary reason. They can open this valve, shut this, shut this, and still have water to the house. We really tried to design this so that it could be maintained and functional downstream, not just during construction, but even after construction. Then as we come around here, we have a whole house water shutoff valve. So if we needed to isolate the whole system this direction, we very well could. Don't forget too, there's a valve out at the street at the meter box. The more we understand where the shutoffs are, the better in case there was ever some kind of a catastrophic failure to be able to take care of that quickly. Okay, let's go on to the flow itself now. On the left, what looks like waves and is red, that's the valve LED. It's red, showing that the valve is closed. On the right, what looks like Wi-Fi signal is the status LED of the unit itself. Let's go ahead and hit the middle button, which is the reset button, and watch what happens. And now we're allowing water to flow through. Let's go ahead and run through some of the different options, the different settings that it can be at during construction. The status LED on the right is blinking, showing that the water is flowing normally. It alternates between blinking and a steady state. If it remains a steady state, that means that there's some kind of an obstruction and the waterway or fl and flow turbine would need to be checked. There's three different leak detection sensitivities with this unit. High, medium, and low. The default level of leak detection sensitivity is high and that is red. You select that, although it is default, just by pressing that reset button once. If you press it twice, it will go to the medium, and three times, and it will go to low. You can see that that LED turned green. If it was medium, it would have turned yellow. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. There's something else that the reset button can help with. If you press the button five times, you can see that the valve automatically closes. What it's doing now is testing the whole system for leaks. 
I think that's a pretty smart play to do, maybe during the trim of construction, is just to make sure, by testing this, that there's no leaks anywhere in the system. On the left, you can see that it's showing that the water is not flowing normally, but if we give it just a little bit more time, we'll see that valve open right up, and everything will be just fine. Let's go back to those three different levels of sensitivity for the flow leak detection. Let's focus just for now on the high, and really what it is, is it can sense three different things and turn off the valve. The first is the total quantity of water consumed in one sitting. The second is gallons per minute, so it's a flow rate. And then the third thing is how long the water is running. So at its highest level of sensitivity during construction, if it consumes 10 gallons total in one single use, it'll turn off. If it does five gallons per minute, so that's the flow rate for 10 or more seconds, it'll turn off. And then just a total amount of time, five minutes. And so if the house is gonna be unoccupied, we might wanna have this at a very sensitive setting. On the other hand, if we think we're gonna be using it for a while, the medium steps down and then the low allows the most water, the most total water, the most gallons per minute, and then the most time. Now let's go ahead and show you this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, have it set to the highest sensitivity. I'm gonna run a bathtub, and I'm gonna run a, uh, uh, just a lav, and then we'll see if this ends up stopping that flow. Okay, now remember, we have the leak detection sensitivity at its highest level. So let's see how long it takes for the water to shut off. I'm up to about 15 seconds. So you can hear it already starting to taper off. That's about 35 seconds. Now I don't know if it was total water flow or if it was gallons per minute that it was uh, detecting. It definitely wasn't total quantity of time. But that gives you a good idea. If there was a pipe that burst somewhere, that could be a lot of water flow. And so, that flow by moan can turn it off and save us a world of hurt. There's just a couple of more things back in the crawl space that I wanted to show you. Let's go ahead and open this back up. But you'll notice the water goes through, but it doesn't take too long before that valve is going to turn off. So you need two things during construction. We don't have Wi-Fi, but we do have to have electrical and water flow. So the reason that just turned off is because the bathtub and the lav still have open taps. So what we have down here in the crawl space is one receptacle for it to plug into. And that's all you need, is you need water pressure, you need a power supply, and you're able to use this during construction without Wi-Fi. And that brings us to the end of the video on the flow by mowing. Uh, as my brother-in-law called it, it's almost like a circuit breaker for water. He's an electrician by trade. And I have to say, knowing that I have that unit down there protecting the house while it's sitting, it's up for sale, it's unoccupied, really does lower my stress. When you have water damage, it's not only having to fix that problem, but even in the future, you never forget that. And it's in the back of your mind. When I go up to this house, is there going to be a water leak? It's a really good idea if you have that system to use it when you do your plumbing trim. Yes, during construction, during the rough-in phase, you've had to test your water supply, your drain waste vent system, but to be able to test it again, the supply side, it's just, it, it's a smart time to be able to do that. 
This isn't an ad for this product, but just so you know, there are a couple of add-ons. Uh, for a homeowner, you can connect this up to Wi-Fi. You can have devices around water units like your refrigerator, your washing machine, uh, your dishwasher, so that if those detect water, it too can trip that, uh, that flow device. So I hope you've enjoyed this. The channel is devoted to all things design and construction, but we can't overlook the importance of maintenance. Uh, we can do all of these things to a house, but if the house isn't maintained well, or if it suffers some kind of preventable catastrophic failure, I don't think we've fully, uh, we've fully lived up to what our role as builders is. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like or comment below. I'm on Pioneer Builders Inc. is my Instagram account. I'm pretty active over there. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this.